Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble. See what it says there, Alex? That's me, and we'll be here until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States, which you see right below you there. Ladies and gentlemen, the person you see there is out in Hollywood, California, where uh, nobody's working, right? Well, we're doing what we can, but, you know, protocols are in place, and, um, you know, in terms of screenwriting and stuff, I, I have a meeting tomorrow uh, in NoHo at an outdoor cafe. We're trying. We're doing our best. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, re the review aspects of my career continue because they're sending me screening links and enabling me to do uh, various review things for GabNet and for Marina Times and so on. But it's these are very different times it's very like very say. different times um you know i mean it's it being the the movie business especially has been hit hard uh because it's hardly something you can do without being close to other people you know right the uh, the only thing that's proceeding and again i have two projects that are currently happening um the only things that are I feel comfortable about proceeding with are uh, animated projects because they can be done from cubicles. Yeah, and they can be done from home if somebody really wants to do it. You know. Right. So, yeah, the voice work and stuff would yeah. be remote. Yeah. And we're we're proceeding on one of the projects, and uh, you know, another thing is sitting, you know, waiting to be greenlit and. And then there's this other thing that I'm doing, uh, hopefully in the next few days, uh, nailing down the, the deal, uh, and it's going to probably be done via remote. It's going to be a, a short that's probably done via Zoom or something. So, I mean, yeah, things things are dicey and different. And um, in various uh, locations, I think Vancouver and a few other places, people are doing yeah. you know, live action well, stuff. Well, I mean, uh, to talk to the, the, the movie business for a moment, I mean, I belong to SAG-AFTRA, and currently we're in a big fight with the union because what they did was they changed all, all our um, uh, deals for, uh, uh, for health uh, insurance so that they, cha they, they got rid of ours completely, the one we had, and they're trying to get us to go to something else where they send us off to some insurance guys who then coordinate our benefits and blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's not our insurance, okay? And for the people who are not 65 and are under, uh, the terms for them to get insurance has changed where they have to work so many days a year, they have to make $10,000 more money in a given year in order to even qualify for the benefits, right? And nobody's working. Right. right. You know, it's so who, they can't qualify for the benefits. And then they changed one other thing, and that was if you're getting a pension, okay, and you're getting residuals, you can't have the residuals count as the money you brought in from union work. They, it used to be you could apply the residuals to that. Now you can't. That means, think about it, somebody like James Earl Jones, who doesn't make do much anymore, but has a lot of voice work out, of the, out there. A lot, he probably every day goes down to the mailbox and there's a whole fistful of residual checks, right? He can't get insured under this new system. That makes no sense. I know. It makes no sense. But anyway, the, the fact is the whole business has kind of changed. And everybody uses the uh, pandemic as an excuse for bad behavior. Like my union is using it as an excuse for their bad behavior. Uh, and some people go, well, you know, we, 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 we can't handle that technical problem now because, you know, the COVID's out there. Yeah, but you're working from home, <laughs> you know. You could answer the phone just as fast from home as you could if you were sitting at work. 
I don't even want to get into the uh, nightmarish uh, rabbit hole I dove down for uh, someone who has um, independent contractor and self-employment status in California. Um, there's something called pandemic <clears throat> unemployment assistance that they were opening to those of us who do freelance. And like it or not, over the past five, six months, a lot of my consulting work has dried up. Some of my, uh, you know, uh, copy editing, writing, the, the things I do to to keep the keep the cash flowing, and one little error on a form, and you are screwed, man. And in fact, I found myself uh, yeah. being on the phone for hours, uh, not getting through, getting to the wrong people, and still at this juncture, months later. It hasn't been ironed out because, you know, mm -hmm. every possible excuse to not get things moving forward. So I, I don't know. I, you know, look, um, we persevere, you know. Just as long as you haven't got the coronavirus, you're ahead of the game. Right. So yeah. luckily, I'm, I'm pretty good about that. I, you know, a couple of socially distanced garden parties, uh, one in San Francisco, a couple of trysts down here everybody wearing masks and staying six feet apart um went out for ice cream on sunday night with my friend nikki and we went to fossilman's which is the uh, oldest ice cream parlor in los angeles and it was fantastic and you know it's the holiday weekend and i'm pretty much by myself the whole time and then you know nikki and i go well you know we're going to meet we're going to have some ice cream so we go out uh we order up a really delicious couple of scoops chocolate dipped strawberry and espresso. She had a kind of a banana boat, I don't know. And then we sat six feet apart from one another, took off our masks, ate our ice cream, avoided other people, and had a lovely conversation for, uh, you know, about an hour. And then it was like, okay, see you later. And, you know, both of us have been extremely careful. You mm -hmm. know, no one wants to come down with this thing. And at the same time, I'm thinking, Oh, wait a minute. When I got back into the car, I took off my mask and scratched my nose without oh. using the hand sanitizer first. Oh, I'm screwed. So it's three days later and I'm still, you know, feeling OK. So I, I don't know what to say yeah. about it, but that's the world we're living in right now. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I have what I call the covid dream. Do you ever have the covid dream where you have a night, you have a dream that you go out and then you forgot your mask? No, but that's an <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't know. I try yeah. to keep the mask sandy. So and, what? what so, so and sanitary. Yeah. So are the movie theaters opening up out there? I would imagine not, because California's still been hit pretty heavy with the virus. Uh, well, uh, a new film called The Broken Hearts Gallery is opening this weekend. It's a uh, a rom com about a young woman in Manhattan uh, who keeps little trinkets from the past and. Can't seem to let go of the past, and she yeah. turned it into a kind of an art project. Uh, and it's very sweet, and I think it's only opening in theaters. And I saw a list, and it listed a few locations in, in um, Southern California, and I'm thinking they must be drive-ins. I didn't look further in because I didn't want to address that yet. So, but, but they really haven't opened up the movie theaters out there yet. I don't think so, no. no. I, only if you have outdoor... Uh, they're doing various outdoor situations up in uh, our hometown of San Francisco, where, I, where I'll be in October for a few weeks. Um, they're turning Fort Mason into a drive-in theater. Uh, they're using the lot and projecting on one of the big walls or putting up erecting a screen. So that's going to be a drive-in. And it's like, I don't know, $42 a car. I just really? like how oh, you have a car. And I, you know, I don't know what the hell we're looking at. I do know, and I love Halloween and Mardi Gras and New Year's Eve, any excuse to have a party, even though, as you know, I'm not uh, right. any drinker of any sort. Um, Halloween is canceled in Los Angeles. I know that. Uh, no trick-or-treating allowed. Um, you can drive in your car in various neighborhoods and wave at people while you're wearing your costume. I think that's been permitted. Uh, it's, you know, yeah. what do you think? Ooh, I mean, uh, well, I mean, um, so far as as the movie business is concerned, they've really gone the route of trying to release these things, but not their big tentpole pictures uh, on yeah. on uh, online. 
you know, but some of your movies, which probably wouldn't have done very well at the box office anyway, or would have had limited appeal at the box office, are being Mostly, released. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they still have plans to release the James Bond film in November in theaters, but uh, it's a dicey one. You know? I don't think they really, I, I don't think they should, honestly. I mean, I don't want to watch it on my laptop. I don't want to watch a, you know, I, I don't. I, I mean, honestly, those are one of the, the, there's a handful of movies that really, you know, the superhero films and such, fun to watch at home after you've seen them in the immersive circumstance. Your home entertainment unit, you have such a massive screen, you have great sound, I know you do. I remember how you had it. Most on. people do, though. Now they at least have the bare minimum of that. They have at least a fifty-five inch screen. Uh, yeah, so maybe you, maybe you, know, you go down. Fine. You go down to Costco. You want to buy a cheap set for three fifty, three hundred fifty bucks. You got yourself fifty-five inch screen. You know. Well, okay. So there, there's that. But I mean, you still have to get access to the to the stream and such. Um, I know that Bill and Ted which was meant as a theatrical release originally and went, they went, we're, we're going to go direct to video. I understand they did great. I, I heard the numbers were really good on it. But now, um, what have you heard about Mulan? Because Mulan was to begin with, if you have Disney plus, which I have, okay, you're paying right. what five ninety five a month, something like that. I can't remember six ninety five a month for the service. Right. And then if you want the movie, well, it's a little add on now. And that add on was like, Thirty bucks, twenty nine ninety five. You know, and uh, uh, to me that was that was not the break even point. You know, I think if you'd they'd gone nineteen ninety five, they might have had a better shot. Plus the fact that I finally saw the movie, and I, it ain't worth thirty bucks. <laughs> no, uh, seven point five million in box office, I guess overseas, seven point yeah. five. Uh, at this job, I don't know what the numbers really are, and I don't know what Disney Plus has pulled in. I just tried to check and see, and didn't come up with anything. They're probably not going to come out with the figures. They're probably going to keep them close to their vest. I, I would suspect that they did okay, but they've been advertising like crazy, you know. So by virtue of that, they would do a somewhat okay. But then people see the price, and they go, well. You know, Disney's going to have it on Disney Plus in December for your right. for just your normal, you know, fee. So you can't wait for then. By the way, wait for it because it's not worth it. Well, you know what? It's solid. It's one of my favorite of their um, repurposing cartoons to live action. It's got a lot of that martial arts vibe. You've got some top notch um, Asian actors that are involved in it. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not offensive, except apparently there's offense because the lead actress uh, stood uh, on the side of the Chinese government in the Hong Kong, um, you know, uh, what do you call them? The uh, demonstrations. Yeah. And, and that has angered tons of people. Wow. Wow. The people have also been pissed off that at the very end of the movie, um, the filmmakers thank a province where apparently people are also horribly oppressed. Oh, I, is know. that the one where they're rounding up all the all the uh, uh, yeah, Muslims yeah. So or something? And, thank, and, yeah, yeah. We, we want to thank those people for their help in making this film. I, it, that apparently has blown up in their face to some extent, and I know you know. Yeah, uh, but but people people who are sitting at home getting Disney Plus really don't know any of this stuff. No, you know, no, they're just going to either watch it or not. And I I'll think just, what they're going to have is once they watch it and pay that 30 bucks because you don't know whether it's good or bad till you watch it, Right. I think they're going to feel it wasn't worth the 30 bucks, and it is going to sour them on any future attempts at this same... To do this. Again, your, your discussion with me uh, last week on Culture Blast was price it down to 20 bucks, and, you know, it's not as big a, a bite in the butt and in fact i would tend to agree having watched it i you know i i would be hard for me to say oh yeah pay 30 bucks if you have a family of five and you know three of them are you know tweens yeah okay fine watch it it's going to be I, cheaper I, than taking them to the theater but i think that right. if you even took them to the theater and saw that movie you'd have buyer's remorse okay i don't i i i, th I think the expense outweighs how good the film is, 
all right? Well, yeah, you know, I just thought that they did yeah. a good job with it. I didn't think it's a, it's not a great movie, you know, and people are going to, there are some purists that are going to say, where was the wacky dragon and whatever. But I think that they did a good job of changing well, it up. Well, we're not, we're not really reviewing the film here, but we're talking, no, no, no. We're talking but about the saying, economics of, of these new release patterns, which right. are as a result of the COVID. You know. I only bring it up. I only bring the quality of the film up as you did. You you think it's not worth the thirty dollars? I agree, particularly mm -hmm. if it's you know one or two people watching it at home. But if it was a theater thing and people were just paying regular mm -hmm. theatrical entry, it was good. You know, I don't like. I I I just think these. Well, I, like, I'm just wondering if this if this method of distributing, like you say, Bill and Ted did fine. Well, how much were they charging for Bill and Ted? Maybe it was a lot cheaper than thirty bucks. I think I'm sure it was like the 1995. It might have even it might have even been 1495. I've seen well, that in any price. event, I heard they did well. I yeah. didn't get. I don't have the the figures. I don't know absolutely. Well, I heard that uh, Trolls World Tour, right, made a fortune. They said they made more mo more money putting it online than they would have made if it had gone direct to the theaters. That's absolutely true. And uh, someone just said, "Hey, I like t uh, Trolls World Tour better than the first movie." Like you could actually distinguish between two shitty. Well, movies. yeah, well, I, right. you know, I'm not no, going to go I, see World Troll Trolls Two because, quite frankly, I, I there were so many unanswered questions in Trolls One yeah, right. I that know. I, you know. Here's my biggest question about Trolls 2. Does it have as good a song as Can't Stop the Feeling by Justin Timberlake off the first one? Because that's the only good thing. <laughs> and you had to sit through it, right? Yeah, sure. I, I did have to sit through it. And, I, you know, I, I could stop the feeling by getting up and walking out, but I, I couldn't because I was being honorable and, and watching the movie for review. And, and Justin, I know you're not watching, but... Great track. One last thing before we go here is that uh, 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 Siskel and Ebert were once asked, "Did they ever walk out on a film?" Because you know you got to go to these things, you got to review them, and you got to sit through them. And a lot of times, you get a terrible one. Did you ever get up and leave? And they said they were watching one film. They both got up, looked at each other, and went, "Life's too short," mm. and they left the theater. And the film was Mediterranean, which went on to win the Academy Award for Best Foreign Picture. Wow. <laughs> now, I watched that entire thing, and I thought it was good, but it's a slog, man, at first. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it, look, everybody's got different approaches but, to this stuff. And, and honestly, yeah. I, can't, I have walked out on one or two movies, but uh, I couldn't. I think Well, when, when people think that, oh. Somebody's trying to call me. No, you're not going. It says unknown. Oh right? yeah, of course. Yeah. It's probably SAG after telling you they're revoking your uh, insurance entirely because yeah. of your bad attitude. Well, what I've already suggested to the people who are against this is that we get one of those big inflatable rats. You know the scab rats that they put out in front of places they're on strike against, it, and sure. put one outside the Burbank offices of SAG after. Mm -hmm. You know. Anyway, listen, we've run out of time here, but I want to do this some more because it's a lot to cover just in the in the general business of entertainment and, and how it's being impacted by this thing. And it doesn't look like it's getting better anytime soon. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. You know, my meeting is going to be masked and we're going to be careful. And I'm really not sure about the, the shooting pattern. I don't know what their intent is. Uh, is going to be with this thing, and, you know, we'll see. Well, wear your mask, wear dark glasses, and you can tell them you're 18 years old, and they'll buy your idea. No, no, <laughs> they're already on board with me, you bonehead. And, yeah. and again, <laughs> for animation, because they don't care how old you are, yeah. as long as you're good. Yeah, well, keep saying that. Anyway, hey, listen, good talking to you again. These are very good uh, little things we do here, and I get nice reaction to them, too. So. Well, that's good to know, and, and uh, regarding your negativity, keep on being the curmudgeon you are. I Alex. certainly will. It's my stock and trade. Talk to you later. Bye. Cheers. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, thank you very much, Michael Snyder. I like doing those little things with Michael. We might do more of them because, uh, you know, as long as there are any movies to really talk about, uh, that, that's pretty good. I, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to go get my soda. I forgot that. I didn't I need my... Well, what I'll do is once I get a, 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 a 
bunch of people here. I'll maybe run out and go get my uh, my my uh, Snapple. But anyway, uh, have we got some people ready to go? Yeah, we got some coming in. Uh, here's Fred Sox. He called the other day. Jim Sullivan. I don't know who Jim Sullivan is, but we will soon Jim find Brady. out. Charm City Junction. Music from Eck Robertson. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Arkansas born, but uh, uh, made his name okay. in Texas. Okay, here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Peter Remove. Yes, Eck Jim Robertson. Sullivan. Okay, Jim. Goodbye. Oh, no. Don't go. No, no. What? No, I'm here. No, you're there, but Jim Sullivan, I'm getting rid of him. No, no. <laughs> I am Jim Sullivan. You are Jim Sullivan. Well, how yes, can they formerly known as uh, Fred Sox. Yeah, but then why is Jim Sullivan coming up down here below me? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's really strange. People can see that. Look at that. Look, I got that twice. Uh, I, okay, I'm going to go remove. And come on, remove this Jim Sullivan. And it's not removing. Oh, that's terrible. Could you do me a favor, Fred? Hang up and then call back. Because apparently, what? apparently you signed in as Jim Sullivan as well, and I've got uh, too many. Pe I, I can't get rid of the Jim Sullivan here. So just okay. hang up uh, and uh, call uh, back. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Uh, okay. Bye bye. Uh, right. Let me see here. Jim Sullivan. Jim Sullivan. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. More uh, chat. Um, uh, remove. Okay. I'm going to try and remove him. Okay. There we go. Come on, go away. Oh, boy. I don't know what the problem is. Hold on a second. Let me get the other people in here. And uh, let's see. We've got some people coming in. Uh, and uh, we got Brian Neary and we got Vernon Nunn. And I wish I'd get rid of Jim Sullivan for crying out loud. I can't get rid of Jim Sullivan. Uh, I don't like Fred, a bad pen. Fred, Fred, would you hang up, please? Please. Uh, yes. Yes, hang up and then call back, okay? Because if you're Jim Sullivan as well, maybe you're you're the one that's keeping this up here, okay? Okay, okay. Okay. Are you gonna are you gonna get rid of yourself? Is this gonna <laughs> take is this gonna take all night? Here, I'll I'll get rid of you, okay? Remove. Okay. Do you wanna remove Fred Sox? There we go. Now he doesn't go away either. Why don't these go away? Jeez almighty, I don't get it. Listen, F Fred, please hang up. Disconnect yourself. Turn off Zoom. Oh, boy. Oh, let me see here. Uh, put, put him waiting room. That's what I'll do with him. Okay. Uh, and uh, let me see here. I got to... I want everybody. I just wanted to. I want to make Charlie smile tonight. Oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> wait a minute. Now, Football wait a minute. season, Charlie. Where's your cowboy gear? Come on, man. <laughs> that okay. was last now, night. Hold, hold on a second. Now I've got. Josh to... has got his going all every night. <laughs> yeah. Now I got to figure out how to get myself back here. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. Well, I got rid of Fred Socks. Jeez, Almighty. Hello, everybody. <laughs> how are you? Hey. What a pleasant way to start the show. Da, 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 da. Uh, how are you all doing this evening? Good, Hello, good, Vernon. Good. good to see you tonight. Um, good to be here. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> um, let me see here. Okay. Uh, we're all here. And how, how is everything going in the world today? Am I, did I miss anything? Oh. <sighs> okay. Oh, yeah. Well, Gi Giuliani was on... Uh, uh, Chris's show for a while tonight is pretty interesting. On whose whose show, Chris Cuomo's? Uh, Cuomo. Yeah, oh, wow. it looked like he was just oh, gonna do like a quickie with, with him, mm -hmm. with uh, about the nine eleven stuff, and then he got into one or two questions, and then it just ended up like thirty five or forty minutes. So yeah. they started just being a lot of arguing. Oh, okay, all right. So, uh, but that's it, huh? That's all the big news. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing more. Uh, uh, hello, Fred. Hello. How are you? Uh, Fred did our show on Monday, right, Fred? Yes, yes. And Fred ha has has an interesting voice. Why is that? Well, you had a very interesting... I always found your voice very interesting the other day. Or maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. No, that that was somebody else. Yeah. But that was probably Jim Sullivan. 
<laughs> I don't know who that guy was. Oh, okay. But anyway, hello, Fred. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show. I'm glad we got it sorted out. I don't know yeah, why. Me too. Thanks, Alan. You signed in as Jim Sullivan. You signed in as yourself. And I couldn't get uh, Jim Sullivan removed from the uh, picture here. So. Yeah, I, I, I figured it out now. It was that I, uh, I was trying to get my real name on there so you wouldn't have to. Uh, oh, well. Go through, go through that. But I, I guess I screwed it all up. Yeah, well, Fred Sox, it, it, it sounds like you know, baseball team, yeah. of course. <laughs> Are you a Red uh, Sox fan by any chance? No, a Yankee fan. Oh, okay. So Fred oh, Sox makes really? no sense at all, then, right? I'm very you eclectic. <laughs> I see. You're very eclectic. Yeah. Um, anyway, our our lines are open, and uh, you know what? What we really need on this panel now is a good old fashioned right winger as well uh, to to mix it up here. You're not right wing, are you, Fred? No, sir. Nah, no. So uh, I'd be opposite. Quite the opposite, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. Uh, we we lost somebody who was uh, was a uh, uh, the right winger here. Well, he wasn't really a right winger, was he, Robert? No. 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 He was a trumpet. A trumpet. <laughs> hey, I didn't think of that one. There's a new one for you. Um. <laughs> Donald Trump, if he had like a singing group, he could call them the Trumpets. Uh, anyway. Um, uh, but I, I, I do miss, what I do miss is a real decent right winger on this program. So if you're out there, all you got to do is go over to uh, gabnet.net. And on the right-hand side of the page is a little place where it says Zoom. You can Zoom. Click here to Zoom. And you just click on that, and it'll automatically uh, uh, put you uh, in here. And you can, I could uh, play a, a right winger if you like. Y- y- well, you know. It's very simple. The, the problem, Invite Patrick on Facebook. Well, Patrick is, Patrick's, a, uh, yeah, 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 where is Patrick? He should be, we, he calls at least once a week. We haven't heard from him this week. Um, uh, uh, I, I think all Republicans are hiding. You think so? <laughs> from our. After the last two weeks, our, I can see why. Uh, your show. Well, it has not been a good two weeks for the, when, uh, Here's the problem. I feel sorry for right wingers. I feel sorry for conservatives because they're being represented, at least ostensibly, by this moron that's in the White House. And quite frankly, if I were a true conservative, I would not like him representing my frame of thought. Right, Josh? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just, uh, I, 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 and and to to have him representing those people and then doing the idiotic moronic things that he does i mean he, he this guy's the only guy i know who can deny stuff that they actually have a recording of him saying how do you do that yes jo, uh, yes vernon i work with a fellow at home depot who's uh, to the right of attila the hun okay then yeah. <laughs> and i talked to him i talked to him today about this atlantic by magazine the way I, I checked i checked into it and attila the hun in spite of all the things people have been saying for years was a left winger so anyway go ahead okay yeah. anyway th- this guy I, I i just tried to strike up a conversation with him knowing his leanings and i said well what do you think about that uh atlantic magazine article where trump called the military people who died in the military and the wars and everything losers and suckers he says he says that's all fake news i said what do you mean i said it was it was in this article yeah but it was never it's not fact it was not corroborated and i'm going what you know they do not print something like that unless it's corroborated by more than one person yeah so I he, just walked away after that. I mean, he, yeah, he, he obviously wasn't going to budge on it's just like the, the last conversation I had like that with him was about the Second Amendment. They had, and he wants to he wants to quote the thing about the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. And I said, yeah, but what happens right before that phrase? I said, in order to maintain a well-regulated militia. And he says, it doesn't say that. I said, yes, it does. Get your Second Amendment out and read it, buddy. Yeah. Just, well, they. I saw a guy on television. He talked to talking about uh, about denial. 
They yeah, they had some guy they were interviewing in a crowd or whatever, and they said, "Why aren't you wearing a mask?" And he said, "Because the whole coronavirus thing is a hoax to ruin our country." <laughs> And he said... All those uh, fake bodies, right? He, he said, yeah, but didn't you hear uh, the, the president uh, say to, um, uh, on a recording, that he felt that it was a dangerous situation and blah, 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 blah. And the guy went, well, then he's wrong. <laughs> I mean, these people are just... Uh, they, when it comes to this, I don't know why it becomes a political issue. It makes no sense that it's a political issue. The commonly held trope. So yeah, many people I'm sorry. died in Italy and uh, mm -hmm. other various places. That yeah. that's not the United States. They they died in Europe also. So yes. how does right. how does he make logic out of that? I, don't I know. have no idea. But uh, you know, this was some moron they, yeah. they picked yeah. off the street. Who? But what were you saying, Robert? About I, I was about to say the commonly held trope among Republicans is that Democrats couldn't organize a one car funeral well we all these years i've been hearing that but now suddenly we organized a worldwide pandemic and had you know 192,000 fake americans i guess they're cardboard cutouts that uh, yeah yeah uh, the other thing that i that i don't get and and it, it, it it's a real problem i mean you've got a president here who takes statistics and gets them all wrong. He said, for instance, we don't have the worst death rate in the world. Okay. Yes, we do. Well, he is, it, he's going by some, figuring it out in a, in a weird way, you know, that like a per, per thousand people, maybe we don't, haven't had as many, as bad a death rate or whatever. But all I know is that yesterday in the United States, I heard the figure something like over 1,100 people died of COVID in this country yesterday. In, in one day. In one day. In, yeah. In Spain, where they're having a resurgence, 14. Okay. Not backwards. Yep. Uh, wow. Oh, there we go. France yesterday, 35. So, Italy, 14. Yeah, so this, Spain, yeah. 34. The United States, 1,206. Now, I don't care. Then, yeah. That that's adjusted per population. Oh, if that so is, if Spain if Spain sorry, it's a lot of focus, but if Spain and Italy had as much population as we had, they juiced up the numbers to match that. That's great, great. Let me look at, look at those numbers a second. So, in other words, France's numbers would be 171 if they were the size of the United States in population, right? Yes. And right. what's yep. the next one? Uh, moving Italy closer. 76. Yeah. For my, and then uh, yeah. And, and then uh, oh, and then uh, uh, two nine uh, thirty seven. So that, that's two thirty seven for Spain. Yeah, that's he, right he, after he said that uh, Italy and everybody else is spiking right now, and he's been talking to people at Spain that are having a big problem right now. That's if, what he said. So if, if adjusted for population, that's uh, yeah okay all right yeah. But he said like four. It, it, it well, he said like Italy was ramped up four hundred percent or Spain mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we started with like two. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you got to remember, <laughs> these were countries that were at least at one point. These countries were way uh, uh, in advance of us of really having a bad situation, uh, and they bent the curve. And now uh, these countries have a death rate far lower than ours, even if you adjust for size of population. And yet he goes on and says, oh, no, we have less deaths than they do in Europe. What? You could take all those European countries, add yeah. them together, okay, for deaths yesterday, and they don't even begin to equal how many people died in the United States yesterday. But, but all the lies that he just keeps saying are blatant lies, especially like this last week. Mm -hmm. I mean, Biden and those guys just have to keep hammering that, that he's saying, you know, he keeps saying they're going to take the guns away and all these uh, other things. Yeah. Just yeah. got to keep hammering that. No, this is our platform. This is what we're standing for. Not what he's telling you guys. This is coming from our mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. But yet uh, there are people that just think that Trump can't. Is it, yeah, why? Our president wouldn't lie. You know, who wouldn't lie? Really? No. Yes, Jeff. My mother always would say, mm -hmm. if you lie, you're going to get pimples on your tongue. 
Yeah. That sounds gross. Oh. It sounds pretty bad when you're yeah. like 10 years Jeez. old. You're and scared. what if you what if you spell liar wrong? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, pimple. Trump can't even spell liar. <laughs> yeah. He knows the word, but he can't spell it. Anybody have pimples on their con tongue at all? No. no, no. <laughs> I, I I don't understand it. it. Doesn't make sense to me. But did any did anybody see the poster with Trump for um, having been nominated for the Nobel Prize and they spelled Nobel N O B L E? Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. What was this? This was a sign. That, you know, he got nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, and so the Republicans. No, let me let me, not, let me let, let's to begin with. Let's just tell people. Oh sure. You, Robert, could be nominated for a Nobel yeah, oh, no, Peace absolutely. Prize. I could be and nominated. And I don't see why I haven't been. In other words, if <laughs> you, if you, yeah, if you want to nominate several somebody, times, that's right, <laughs> several times. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where you write, but you. Write I would nominate you. Oh, okay. thank you. I appreciate well, that. Well, if one of you could like get a hold of the Nobel, if you you know have nothing to do, you get a hold of the Nobel Peace Prize people. And um, get, nominate me. Let's see what happens. There you go. I bet I'd be more in contention for it than Trump is. <laughs> yeah. And you might spell it right. <laughs> for the Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel, Noble. Nobel yeah. Peace Noble. Prize. Maybe it's a different one. Maybe it is. he is worthy of that one. <laughs> yeah, they should give him that one. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many Trumpers know what started the Nobel Prizes. Well, let's see if our uh, if our group here knows. Anybody know who Al, uh, was it Albert or Alfred Nobel? Uh, was yeah, but he was the inventor of, of what was guns? It? No, right? No. Dynamite. 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 Yeah. Dynamite. Yeah. I guess that's what hardly you... hardly a requisite for a peace prize. I would say. Well, I think that in in his case, uh, it's a perfect case of. Um, um, Guilt yep. coming back to haunt you, you know. I mean, yeah. well, they have all those it. other prizes well, too. They I, have the I, prize for yeah. physics and yeah. for literature. But you know something? You've got to, you've got to give Nobel credit. I mean, before dynamite, uh, how did we manage to build a lot of things? I mean, dynamite's a very constructive piece of equipment if you use it correctly, or you can blow people to itty bitty bits. You know? and, it, and it made a living for Jimmy Walker. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what is that many times we invent things, and they get misused. Okay, and that's a good example of the misuse of of something because it the people change it into bombs and things like that. In fact, am I right or wrong? But isn't the thing that actually ignites a nuclear device, an atom bomb, isn't that dynamite? I think so. Yeah, the initial explosion. Some starts. some other explosion actually forces the uranium yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the dynamite they use. I, I, but I may be wrong. I don't know. Uh, actually, it's the uh, hydrogen bomb that a nuclear bomb ignites the the uh, hydrogen bomb. Oh, really? Yeah, because Efficient. that's what needs the pressure. You don't need pressure. Yeah. All you got to do is bring a certain amount. Of, of fissionable material together, and it'll explode all by itself. We seem to have gotten off the uh, the uh, track of uh, of using uh, hydrogen bombs. Do you ever hear about hydrogen bombs being exploded any longer? That's against the law now. We have we have a non new uh, what do you call it? non proliferation, non -proliferation <laughs> treaty treaty. Yeah. So you yeah. can't explode them anymore. Nobody can. Yeah, but weren't all the bombs after it? I mean, the hydrogen. They did them out in the Pacific a few times, but then they did a bunch of atom bombs after that. They just, you know, the nuclear devices were atomic bombs. Did you ever see a movie called Trinity? Um, the A bomb movie. Uh, it, if you can ever watch it, it is it's 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 uh, narrated by William Shatner, and it is an hour and a half of when they did nuclear explosions, they filmed them. Every one of them was filmed, so they would be able to look at them and see what they did and how they did it. So they took all these films, and end to end, just one right after the other, and each one under it has the amount of power that it has, and they keep increasing and increasing. It's an hour and a half of explosions. Fascinating. 
just fascinating. Trinity was the name Oppenheimer gave the bomb, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Well, you know that he gave the test. Oh, I Tr see. Trinity was the name of the test. As in Holy Trinity. Yeah. <laughs> now, what were the two names of the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Fat Boy or something? Mm -hmm. Fat Boy was one Fat of them. Fat Boy and Little Man. And what was the oh. name of the plane? Enola Gay. Enola Gay. Enola Gay, yeah. yeah. That was for the first one. I think it was a different plane for the, yeah, yeah, the second right. one. And I can't remember which one we dropped first. I think Fat Boy. Enola Gay, yeah. One. Yeah. It was Fat Boy was the first one. And then... Uh, and they they both looked different too. They were two different yeah, looking two, devices. One was plutonium, and the other was the first one was uranium, and the second one's plutonium. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. So which one did the most damage? I would think plutonium. Yeah. Well, the uh, first one killed more people. The, not, the uh, Hiroshima killed more people. Could it be because where we dropped it was uh, it's more, more heavily densely populated. More densely populated. I think that was a bigger city. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Japan called them "oh shit" and not again. <laughs> <laughs> or hey, what's that? I think that was what one guy called it. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, none of that could have ever happened if we hadn't taken the, the Marshall Islands because that's I, where those planes were launched from. I can't remember. Yeah. I think it was on Family Guy that they did a bit about. Uh, uh, it said Hiroshima, 1945. And there's a Japanese guy walking down the street, and then he looks up at the sky and he goes, "Oh my God!" And this giant cougar falls on him. Okay, it was just—I thought it was funny. Okay. Okay. You know. But uh, you know, the thing about the atom bomb, about the nuclear devices, is we're the only country that's ever dropped a nuclear device on a human population. Yep. And we did that how many years ago? How many years ago was that? 1945. 1945. 1945. 1945. So that's how many years? Uh, 75. 75 years. And in 75 years, we have never dropped another bomb. Now that says something for the human race, that we looked at the destruction that those two devices did. And in spite of saber rattling in set for 75 years, We've never exploded one on a human population. Of course, Trump's in power now. Yeah, exactly. Yes, Jeff. Oh, well, you have a lot of these uh, missiles and bombs and all of this stuff uh, in airplanes going yeah. all over the world as protection. Yeah, but, but, okay. we, but yet we never use them. We didn't use them, but we had them. You know what happens, though? Uh, we have a stockpile of not only nuclear devices, but of bombs. Mm -hmm. And they, after a certain amount of years, if you don't <coughs> use them, they go bad. Okay. Yep, they disappear. So what do you do to use <laughs> some of those bombs? What you do is you have a sale. Uh, well, it's almost like a sale. It's called a, uh, like what they did in, in Iraq. Okay, which was you get all the countries of the world to partner with you to drop these bombs on a country, and they are literally paying for the bombs that are now depleted, and you you, you don't you got to use them. There's a sell by date because you can't start building up a more modern arsenal till you get rid of those. So every now and then you got to have a little small war somewhere where you unload all these devices. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Flea market would work. A flea market, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mother of all bombs. Yeah, we're amazing. We are just amazing. So how's everything where you are? I'll tell you, I talked to Ronnie Bennett tonight. And oh, she's yeah. up there in Oregon, Portland. Mm -hmm. And she is planning. She's getting ready. She's, she's packed. And, and ready to get out of the house because yeah, they're saying 10 percent of the state is being asked to evacuate well she said yeah. she says it's coming close for her part of the state because uh there are two fires that are raging mm -hmm. towards each other and when they meet they cause a a like a windstorm and only inflame it greater and she said if that happens we're going to have to move out of here 
and just get out of the way in case it comes this way. And, you know, it's bad enough she's dying of cancer, okay? It's bad enough she's got that going. And she's got, uh, what do you call it? Not emphysema, but the other thing. Uh, COPD. COPD. Uh, she can't even go out to, the, to get her mail because the smoke is so horrible out there that she's yep. been coughing all day. She's had to go full time on an oxygen <clears throat> mask. She'd almost need a Scott Air Pack. Yeah. So, like, uh, uh, where, where you are, <laughs> how is it, Brian? Is it better? It, you know, it tricks you. It seems like it's better, but it's not. The, the air quality, they still say unhealthy air quality. They have that one. The next level down is unhealthy for sensitive people. But this is the highest we've seen it. So they say this today is the worst. Even though the other day was looking orange, um, they are hoping like Tuesday there's some air that's going to push everything more east, so it'll clean out. You know, it's like a big valley here too. So yeah, it's just really bad outside. So we can't go well, outside. Like we went out like three weeks in a row on a Saturday. We'd go to lunch. So but we'd you know social distance and and certain areas outside we can eat. And then, uh, then the fire started hitting, the smoke started hitting, and the high temperatures. At least the temperatures have come down. But then you can't open your window because of the smoke. So you got to keep everything closed up and put the AC on still. So, yeah. but it's really bad outside. Uh, uh, yeah. So it, 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 you're not letting the kids out? No. No. You usually have at least an hour out of playtime, and yeah, not not now. Just one. What could be? What mm-hmm. could be frightening is if the uh, air quality gets so bad. The air gets so acidic and so much soot that it corrodes your air conditioner outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they say a lot of people. You have all the soots on all the cars and everywhere. Oh. You see in the morning, my car, when I get to it, you know, the lights come on automatically because it senses I'm there. And you can see it coming down. They say that Not people, that bad today, but worse the other day. California is a state with a lot of people with swimming pools. Yeah. And I hear that what happens is the ash comes down, hits the water, and then sinks to the bottom of the pool. Mm. So they're going to have to empty their pools out and get all that cleaned out before they can ever swim in their pool again. Yeah. It's getting, it's getting terrible. Real problem. Fred, where, where do you live, Fred? I, I forget now. I live in North Carolina. Now. North, North Carolina. Okay. So yeah, you're but not, I, I originally come from. You're not having any. Uh, any uh, fires down there or anything like that all you have is sheer stupidity right well (laughs) i guess so (laughs) so i originally come from new york i think i told you that already. yeah yeah it's Uh, that's got to be a real culture shock for you then now things are becoming very homogenized especially on the east coast really there's there's really no places to hide anymore um yeah well let me tell you what i've done that that We've wasted our time completely. We watched all 75 episodes, finish it, of The Americans. Mm-hmm. Talk about a binge watch. Two. Huh? I have, too. Yeah. I love that show. Well, I didn't love it, but I got to like it more and more as it went on. Okay? And I felt the, la- the last three seasons were better than the first three. You know? But there were, there were a few things in it. That, that, did you get this, Charlie? Do you remember this son that he supposedly had that was living in Russia? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they had that whole story where the kid is, the guy is leaving Russia, going to come to the United States to find his father. Whatever happened to that story, it just disappeared. Yeah. It's like, I think they gave up on it. They said, ah, this is not a good plot point. Let's just not continue it. Which is, you don't notice... You really don't notice unless you're binge watching it. Yeah. And then you're saying, wait, what happened to him? He's gone. You know. No, it was an interesting series. I mean, it was it was fun that you were rooting for people who were trying to destroy America. But uh, yeah. Well, one of the things I liked about it is it brought back my years of my Russian studies, and and it was fun to try and pick up some of that Russian. Well, they said that uh, in things that I saw that the uh, the show was based on real uh, real things that went on in this country. That there were Russian f- families, spy families, yeah. just like this, working in the United States in that period of time. And they eventually, I think it was in 2004, arrested about 12 families and deported them back to Russia. 
because they were spies. And one of them was that woman. Remember that gorgeous woman they found here? Mm, and they yeah, sent yeah. her back to Russia? The that redhead, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was one of them. Boy, yep. she, she was hot. She's a big TV personality now in Moscow. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One yeah. thing about that show, my wife was always asking the questions, when do these people sleep? Well, the, I said that, too. That's right, because they, they, all night they were out doing stuff. And then they, during the day, they're running the travel agency. So when do yeah. they sleep? You know? Uh, and, uh, I mean, the, the show has a lot of holes in it, you know? I mean, um, you're supposed to, you're supposed to really like the woman in the end, you know, the, the wife of the husband and wife, uh, but she goes around killing. She must have killed forty people on that show <laughs> in six years. You know, you do what you got to do. You you do what you got to do. Well, I saw an interview with the. the I saw, went online. and go to YouTube and, and watch some interviews with a with a spy, a Russian spy, who got caught. Uh, and they asked him, you know, how do you, what do you think about the Americans? And he said, it, a lot of it's very authentic. He said, you know, it really, really did kind of go on that way. Uh, he said, but, uh, you know, he said, we didn't go around killing people. He said, that really wasn't part of what we did. You know, he said, we were out to get secrets and, you know, do certain things. And sometimes, he said, sometimes you weren't asked for years to do anything. You know, but you just, yeah. you know, but the you, hot Russians, the hot Russian spy who was deported was Anna Chapman. Anna Chapman. Yeah. 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 If you go online and look at a picture of her, she was. Oh, yeah. She she was bonerific. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I just finished watching this series uh, about the, the construction of the railroad that, that you know, connected the east to the west. Really? What was the sh what was Hell that? on Wheels? That was it. Hell, Hell on, on Wheels. Wheels. Yeah, I remember when that show came out. And that I, was quite interesting, actually, because well, you were speaking yeah. about dynamite before. That was a real uh, constructive use yeah. of dynamite yeah. to get through those uh, those mountain ranges and make the tunnels. Yeah, yeah. And it was a very uh, and it was a very interesting series, though. I think it was on for about five years. So there's quite a number of them. Yeah, I know. I, I watched uh, I watched one or two episodes. I just couldn't get into it. I wasn't getting into the... It's slow in the, at first, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, yeah. that's the trouble we get with the entry right. on any of these yeah. shows. You lose interest and you, you don't watch the rest. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Americans gets better and better and better, okay, as it goes on. Would you agree with that, Charlie? Yeah, but yeah. that's the philosophy. Yeah. You know, of making these yeah. shows is to uh, well, start out slow and build and build and build. There's a problem. Crescendo, there was a know? problem with the Americans that I saw. And, and, and I, any of you people binge watch at all shows? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, I do. Yeah. If you binge watch, it's a different experience than yes. watching week to yes. week. In other words, mm -hmm. if you watch week to week, you're going, oh, hey, it's Tuesday night. Let's uh, go watch the Americans. Let's see what happens next week. Boy, we want to. And so you it, you have that week to kind of absorb it and then go to the next yeah. one. Here, you're watching one right after the other after the other. And they don't work as a binge because they weren't created to be binged. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. So, they were created uh, as a weekly show. So if, they, if they're going to have, for instance, flaws, you're going to see those flaws much more glaringly if you just watched episode one and now you're watching episode two and then right after that the same day you're watching episode three and four and yeah. then you're kind of comparing them to each other immediately rather than having a week for your mind to dissipate and kind of forget what went on and then to go, so you won't say like, what happened to his son? Yeah, because... Yeah. You don't remember because it's been yeah. six days or whatever since. Yeah. But, but Marjorie loves the idea of binge watching, you know. So, gee, our people are dropping out in droves tonight. What is this? I don't know. Go away. The Atlantic. Go away. Uh, the Atlantic magazine has called for the end of the Nobel Peace Prize. What was who, who? The Atlantic said what? They said that there should not. They should discontinue and not have. The Nobel Peace Prize. They have a bad track record, and they claim that now with Trump being nominated, it's just uh, but the, should be just no, ended. But I mean, he's been just been nominated. Any yeah. dunce, you could be nominated, Bree. 
Yeah, I'm not not free. Huh? Is there a second? Right after Dunce, I noticed. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just not um, not uh, possible. Okay, so um, uh, the even, it, it, the fact that he's being nominated for a Peace Prize doesn't diminish the Peace Prize. Yeah, what it does is it just says it's open to anybody, and people suge yeah. give suggestions. Basically, they're not nominations, as much as I'm putting his name in for the for the Nobel Peace Prize. But why 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 does it not have any relevance? I mean, uh, well, Obama won the Nobel Peace Prize, and to this day, I can't figure out why. So that was a political. Yeah, they, they do say that in the article that. Um, they say they, they, they primarily give it based on the seeds that are you know planted, but they said it should be based on the fruits, not on the yes. seeds, uh, you know of peace and in a way. And they said that Obama got it just because he was sort of a ge generally fostering good relations among people, <laughs> you know. But he got it before uh, he even became president. He hadn't done anything. Yeah, he that was before he became president. Yeah. I think he was running for president when that happened, though. Yeah, but I could never figure out why he got it. I mean, I, not that I don't think that maybe after he was president he shouldn't have gotten it or whatever, you know. But I just couldn't figure out at the time why he was why he was getting it. You know, I understand that little girl who got it what last year, year before last. Uh, I can't remember yeah. her name now. Yeah. You know, basically says why can't we all get along? You know, and she she was. Uh, uh, I could see why she got nominated for it. Mother Teresa, you know, people like that. One year it was, uh, well, who was it? Was it, uh, was, uh, was it Gorbachev and who? Carter, maybe? I'm trying to remember. That, uh, two, Is Gorbachev still around? I think he might be. I think I he's still know. around, yeah. yeah. Henry Kissinger's still around. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. uh, you're thinking of Greta Thunberg. Great Greta Thunberg, yeah, yeah, or, or Mala, yeah, and uh, yeah, she, bright, bright little lady, you know, and, and I think a good example of uh, uh, of uh, uh, why you should be doing this sort of thing. Uh, what what, hap what happened to my? I I don't understand. I don't have. Uh, um, oh, there we are. Okay. Somebody steal your audience? No, somehow I I <laughs> lost uh, my my feed. Who knows why? You know. Speaking of peace, the, what? Speaking of peace, this was pretty good today. Yeah. Oh yeah, Pence. oh yeah. Uh, there's some Pence. yeah some sanity back into making sure you know. I, I don't think Trump would have done that. They Trump would have walked the other way. But yeah. 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 So at least know that you know 9/11 is bigger than the moment, but that you know there's like. Well, I don't know. for a moment, let, let's I see Trump doing that. You know, let's talk about 9/11 because today there was a lot of feelings. You know, everybody, of course, goes, "Oh, it's 9/11." You know, and then we put salt in the wound some more. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and um, but everybody was saying, you know, it's kind of very, uh, it's kind of weird to have it happening this year because we have yet another tragedy. That has killed even more people than died in 9/11. By multiples, you know, multiples. Oh, it, we it's lost three thousand. Three different 9 yeah. What? I think it's, it equals like six, sixty-three or sixty-four 9/11s. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, but there was that comparison being made and saying that in this time it's kind of weird, you know, that we are uh, uh, beset by this. Uh, but yet, you know, we keep every year we keep doing this thing. And while 9-11 is is certainly worthy of remembrance. Here in New York, it's become like a national holiday. You know, I mean, I'm saying that, OK, every year for five years after 9-11, you do something. Then every then every uh, at the 10th year anniversary, you do some more, maybe at the 15th, maybe at the 20th. Kind of like a class reunion. Yeah, but every no. year, you know, and, and I said to Marjorie tonight, and she didn't understand what I was trying to say, but I said, I would hate to be a family who lost somebody on 9-11, and, 
and now I'm being just forced to remember it, you know, mm. to relive every minute of it. Yeah. Um, uh, this year they got very mad because they always they rang the bell for everybody that died, and then they would name the name. Somebody would say yeah. the name. What they did was they just rang the bell. They didn't name the names. And everybody was so mad. Across town, they had another group of people who were reading the names. And I said to Marjorie, I said, if I were one of those families, I might, that kind of might get to me after a while. I don't want to remember every year the tragedy that I went through. I don't want that wound reopened. Okay. Am I wrong about this? Well, in the news today, uh, I think that's the sad the sad part about it is it was a revealed today in a newspaper article, I forget what newspaper, that the Trump administration has been skimming some of the money that was set aside by Congress to take care of the first responders' health needs. They've been and not sending it. Oh, man. What, how have they been skimming it? Where's it been going? They've been withholding about four million dollars. Look, but that's not that's that's not skimming. That's just that's not, a trip. Well, a certain percentage of the money has not been sent. Oh, okay, but that's not skimming. In other words, skimming would be if you took that money and applied it to like buying, you know, wax lips. Well, he's something. probably building a wall with it. You know. Yeah. 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 There. Well, if that's the case, then it it is wrong. You know. But anyway, back out to Kuala Lumpur now for our latest uh, servant uh, uh, report. Uh, well, wildlife came and got him. Mm -hmm. So he's on his way to... Uh, uh, tell the people what happened the other day. You trapped a... Uh, what is it? It's called a servant. It's a really weird-looking animal. Servant. Yeah, they, they call it a cat, although it's, it's not really a cat. Um, it, it's more like... It's kind of a, a cross between several animals. It, you could think of it as a like a really skinny, long raccoon. Um, oh, okay. You know, I, I it's kind of like that. And and now we've had four of them total. Um, the reason why they get in the attic and the, the, the there was a family I guess up there. The two small baby civets were really loud, so we put a trap up there, and everybody said, "Well, you're never going to catch anything." We actually caught two. We caught two baby civets. And then uh, we thought that would be it, but about a week later, we heard him up there again. We put up another trap. A couple of days later, we caught uh, another one. And then, uh, then uh, you know, it goes a week, week and a half. And then, then we hear another one, put it up there, and we caught a fourth. So, you know, at this point, though, I'm, unless they make noise in the attic, I'm not putting the trap up anymore if, if, if it's a constant noise. If they come and go... I'm not so worried about it, but if they stay there, try to make a home, and are talking all the time, then we're going to try to get rid of them. Now, these are the civets that uh, they feed. They call it coffee luwak. It's mainly popular in Indonesia. If you feed them coffee beans, they eat it. It goes through their system, and once it comes out, apparently it makes the coffee bean exquisite, uh, and it's very expensive. And... Um, that you know, some people say that they mistreat the civet cats. Okay, well, we're getting a little more information than we really wanted. I just <laughs> want to know how you were handling this, and and not the whole history of the cat. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that, that's the same. There animal. are people who who do keep the civet cats as pets here. There are really, oh, okay. and they have, they have blogs online. Okay. Yeah, you well, know, I've heard the, I've heard about the coffee pot uh, part of it before, but I, I think it came from like Djibouti or something like that, where they actually have these animals. People pick wait a minute, people, coffee people beans. pick this yeah. coffee, these coffee beans out of their ass. Are you saying? Yeah, they, they are African and Southeast Asian. There are two, yeah. you know, kinds. And you wonder why I don't drink coffee. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink coffee either. Are you full of shit? I, I, I wish I, I wish I had some Djibouti to put. I mean, not Djibouti. Uh, 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 civic. There's civet. Is it civet? Yeah. I never. But I didn't know those I, animals were here in the United States. Wow. What? Is, what? Well, how do you spell civet? C i v e t. C i v i v i. T. E e t. Yeah. Okay. C v e t. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Anyway, um, so to, oh, also today there was an interview. Janine Pirro interviewed Trump. Did you see this thing yeah. over at Fox? 
and and said, uh, well, uh, what 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 are you going to do with the election? I said, well, if anybody's demonstrating, I'm going to go out and bring the uh, bring the troops out to qu to quell them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I did see that. How close are we coming to a banana republic around here? Who yeah. laid? You know. Did anybody watch the Peter Strzok interview last night? No. Yeah. No. What did he have to say? Yeah, he was on He was on Rachel Maddow's show promoting his book. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I found interesting is that not only did he badmouth Trump, but he badmouthed Hillary and Bernie mm -hmm. during that same period. Yeah, he's nonpartisan. Oh, so he was. In other words, he was didn't just write stuff about Trump. No, right. No. Yeah, but he was the head of the counterintelligence unit in the FBI, and and he's the one who suggested he led a team that started investigating all this stuff that they were finding out about the uh, Trump campaign talking to the Russians, and then uh, uh, they when the Mueller was appointed as a special counsel. They recommended that the uh, the regular FBI continue with the counterintelligence investigation, but nobody picked it up and ran with it. And of course, he got fired. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, but he did make, I think, a big mistake. By uh, uh, a big mistake by uh, putting that in. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the email. Or the email. Yeah. Well, his yeah. text messages with his text girlfriend. Message. Yeah. Yeah. Text uh, message. I think that you just don't do that. Okay. You know, you, you, you no if, kidding. Huh? Yeah. I mean, that was a stupid mistake. How did Rachel Maddow handle that with him? They didn't talk about it. They only talked about the book and, uh, the different, uh, parts of the, uh, counterintelligence investigation. And of course, there's some things he couldn't talk about because they're still classified. Yeah, but and he she, said some of that may still be going on. Did she in bring the up this whole thing about him writing these texts with his no. girlfriend? No. No. How no. could she do an interview with him and not ask about that? Because it was about the book, and it's nothing like that in the book. Well, nothing so of that is even the there's, there's nothing in, so there's nothing about it in the book. It is something that we do know about, or that has been an issue. And she should have asked the question to have him reply to it. I mean, he came to the studio to push his book, but while he's there, you can ask him a whole lot of other stuff, you know? Yeah, I will say this about Rachel Maddow. She's a pretty decent interviewer, but I actually thought Stephen Colbert did a better interview of Mary Trump than did Rachel Maddow. Well, I, I don't think Rachel Maddow's that good. Uh, By the way, I never watched her. Huh? Strzok was on The Daily Show, on no and Trevor Noah did ask him about the, the text messages. And what did he, he say? He said that's his one great regret, that he did that. If okay. he had anything to do over again, he would not send out those text messages. So you see, there, there, there's the reason they asked the question, so you can get yep. just exactly that <laughs> answer, you know. But here again, we get caught up in the purity test. Yep. You know, we get caught up in the purity test of verifying whether or not Peter Strzok said something inappropriate. Oops. In the meantime, the information that he was gathering was of large import, and it gets kind of caught in the web of that he and his girlfriend were making nasty comments. Purity tests kill yeah. movements of all kinds. Well, I, will say, yeah, I will say he was impressive when he was talking about what he was doing in the counterintelligence investigation and how they handled it, the procedures and how he yeah. led the team and all that kind of stuff. He was quite professional and no, quite, did. quite impressive. Did. <clears throat> well, you see, I think that, that, um, uh, he, I, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I missed the interview because I would have loved to have heard it because it, it, it what he was doing is interesting. You know, they, they spin the, because of what went on with the Trump, not getting impeached. Okay. Oh, he got impeached. Well, or, or yeah, getting getting and, thrown and out of office. You can impeach someone twice. Okay, he be, just wasn't removed. Being found guilty uh, of of, uh, of that malfeasance. Uh, it, the problem with that is, is that what he was guilty of is that probably he did collude with the Russians. Oh yeah. Just because he managed to have a bunch of Republican toadies who wouldn't vote to find him guilty. There was a lot of proof there that he did this, uh, and that he. You had, can probably, yeah. you can probably guess what the title of Pete Strzok's book is. 
compromised. Com compromised. compromised. And, yeah. and that was the whole theme of his book, is that Trump is Trump. somehow, we don't know how, but Trump is compromised. You know why? And he's absolutely convinced that the Russians have something on Trump. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what do you think they got on him? Money. I think, it's, I think it's the P tape. I think it's worse than that. I think it's decades of money laundering for the for the uh, oligarchs. That's why he's fighting so hard not to let his uh, tax returns get get re uh, released to the public. Yeah, that that stuff goes way back to when he was uh, in New York, and oh yeah, and yeah. nobody would give him a loan to build new buildings anymore uh, because they they saw how much he, money he was losing. And he had nowhere else to go to to borrow money except yep. Russia. Well, the other thing was is that he supposedly that, was a was a notorious deadbeat. I mean, if right. they tried to start collecting, he would just say, "Don't don't write the check." Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm too big to be to fail or whatever. But then they 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 because they had him, they had him by the short hairs, I guess. Uh, they made him laundry uh, launder money through like Deutsche Bank, and that's mm -hmm. where all of that stuff comes from. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've got something on him, you know, because uh, I mean, he just, he just is too kind to Putin. Uh, oh, yeah. Putin can commit murder, and he will excuse it. He has, which he, he has. 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 Yeah. Um, he, he, this guy, this other guy, the latest guy, was poisoned. They say, uh, but oh, right. yeah, yeah. But you know what they did with that poison? Very strange thing. That poison has a life of about. I don't know, five days or something like that, and then it's out of your system. And so it's yeah. very hard to prove that poison was used to hurt him. But for some reason, it did last in his system longer than they thought it was going to. That's why they let him leave Russia. They made him stay in Russia for like three or four days before they would send him to Germany to get medical help. Because they, they, they mixed it in with that new vaccine they got. That's yeah. what kept <laughs> Maybe that is the new vaccine. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was the guinea pig first test. Well, the other, I, hear they, I hear they're making the new vaccine from those coffee beans that those civics have eaten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the thing is, Woodward, Woodward, that's uh, the Starbucks vaccine. <laughs> Wood, uh, the thing I couldn't get about Woodward is, and this was a, a major thing for me. Is why Trump even sat for that? He you know, went for those interviews. He, didn't go he back thought he once. could smooth him. He thought he sure. could smooth Woodward. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, he yes. said so. so. so th think about what he talked about. Remember that meeting he had with the Russians privately? Mm -hmm. He likes to impress people you know, by saying stuff like that. You could hear it in his voice when he was on those interviews. Just think everything he told Russia. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, uh, he, well, he, he knows for posterity. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody sits down with Woodward. That's kind of, uh, you know, like going to the prom. So, you know, it's no, and he doesn't really care. And let's face it, you know, Woodward is just one voice in a, in a sea of voices now. It's almost cliche. To go, oh, it's in a Woodward book. I mean, you know, Woodward is, is non-ethical, extremely unethical, in my opinion. Because he had that information and he didn't. He didn't no, I, disagree. I disagree with you no, on that. I disagree, too. I disagree on that. To begin with, he wasn't finished interviewing him. Okay, he had to finish interviewing him before he could even release any of that stuff, because he didn't want to screw up the future interviews that he was going to do with him. All right. And some of the stuff that he got at first, he he was he was having a hard time believing what he was hearing. Yeah. So it had to be corroborated by multiple interviews. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they're using that as a big argument. Well, then why didn't he tell America when he heard all of this? Well, what, to be called a liar earlier than you normally would be by doing Number it Number one, he wasn't president. No, he's a and journalist. Trump was. He's a journalist, and he has, he has to write the book. You know, just because he has the information doesn't mean he's got to collate it into a, into so a cohesive work. Let, let's say that, uh, you know, that he got information that there's a huge asteroid that's going to hit uh, 24 hours. That's a different. That's a different situation altogether, Bree. Yeah, really. but uh, you no, know, it's, it's a different. Within... It's a different situation. This is what did he say? What didn't he say? What did he really feel as opposed to what he was saying? It's a whole different thing. It's not hey, an asteroid's going to hit the Earth, and I better not tell anybody. You know, because they're going to find out pretty goddamn fast. 
You know, mm -hmm. but this thing, if Trump had may said to the American public what he said to uh, Bob Woodward in those interviews, he could have saved 100,000 lives. Yep. Could have saved 100,000 lives. If he but had he buttoned had, down... He had his he had his he had his son-in-law whispering in his ear though that it was mostly impacting blue states and they yeah. didn't care. Well, yeah. yeah, that was one part of it, but the other part of it was he didn't want it to affect the stock market. Right. He I mean he was thinking of everything else but the welfare of the American public. Yep. Okay. Uh and and that's pretty that, that that's pretty damning. Uh and and but to to, to turn around and blame the messenger is kind of going a bit far. You know, the messenger delivered the message when he felt he had it in a coherent form that was unimpeachable. Okay? Do uh, you think Woodward matters, though, today, really? Oh, well, obviously he does because everybody's quoting. I think he's going to have an impact. Yeah, he's, he's had an impact. Have an impact. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. I, I, I believe his writing to me, I see him as a Hollywood scriptwriter. He writes everything in a in a manner to so, exert the so, maximum so, amount so, of sort of emotional. So, so, he's a script so, writer. so, so, yeah, right, so, so, I don't, so, I don't, so, I don't, what's I don't wrong think with he that? calls, I what? don't think he calls balls and strikes. Well, no, well, no, he just he reports, you know, and he comes back to you with what he found out. If he he's wants people to read his book, books. Bree, he's got to write it in a way that engages the reader. I mean, he's yeah. a, he's a good writer, and he, he takes poetic license. Yeah. You know, he takes uh, artistic. Don't all license don't from all writers state? take poetic license to some extent? Yeah, uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, I don't think mind. the issue is that he's a writer at this point. It's the, the important that he's uh, everybody's listening to him is because of what Trump said. Yeah, right. They're, they're not listening to him. They're listening to Trump. Something that is written. Right. But it's actual out of Trump's mouth. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear that, that question? Trump says something different every day. The rest of it doesn't count. There were a couple I, of other interesting questions he asked, and one of which was, <laughs> do you feel that being born into privilege has kind of uh, yeah. toned what you think about people, you know, about the world and people in general? And he said, oh, well, you're drinking that Kool-Aid, huh? Yep. Well, what Kool-Aid is that? I don't that? feel it's that a, way at all. It's a perfectly perfectly legitimate question. I mean, I you know, I, I was raised in a white household in a completely white community, and uh, it affected me and the way I perceive the rest of the world. I mean, I've managed to see around that, but you know, you you're you're a product of your environment. Um, Josh, you've been quiet tonight. What do you think about all of this? I mean, did you did you pay any attention to the Woodward uh, tapes, as it were? Yeah, I heard a little bit. Um, you know, if I, I guess if you don't like the way Woodward conducts him, you know, his his books. I mean, you know, I guess don't read him. I mean, he's one reporter who does his work in a certain way some mm -hmm. people like it some people don't i mean some of the people that criticize his books i wonder if they've ever read any of his books i don't know yeah. i mean you know i've read uh three or four of his uh you know i read the agenda back when he wrote it about the clinton administration he wrote one called obama's wars a couple years ago i mean he's written a book about every presidential administration usually at least one sometimes this more is the second one for trump though so the first one was called fear you yeah. know, and Trump, I mean, Trump was not interviewed. He only talked to uh, Trump uh, uh, people. Right. And that, so, that enraged Trump because he didn't get to talk to him. I mean, so, you know, if you don't like what Woodward does, I mean, that's fine. It's fair. But, yeah. uh, I mean, I guess my problem sometimes with the left on that is, you know, the, the, the job of the media is not to decide what's truth and what's not truth. It's to just put out there what people say, just report it. And then all of a sudden... They don't decide what truth is. They just put out what people said, and then people are mad at them for doing that. Well, so, the thing is that you can argue about... It's one way it can't be both ways. Yeah, I mean, but is Woodward supposed to, when he's writing a book like this, supposed to be considered like a reporter? Or is he someone who's out just getting a story and bringing it back to you? Uh, yeah, he's and, not a reporter any longer. He's, he's, not he's writing, retired. He's not writing for a newspaper where everything he right. writes has to be vetted, you know? 
I mean, uh, uh, a lot of these. Uh, That's why I have the problem. Well, no, but but he does get vetted. He gets vetted by his publisher, who doesn't want to publish anything that can't be backed up. Oh, I mean, he's reached a point where he can write what he wants. So that's what I'm saying. Then judge it on that's who he is. And if you don't like what he has, then don't. I mean, if you think everything he writes is horseshit, then don't buy his book. Yeah. If you think that he gets the inside scoop and that's what you want, then buy his book. Yeah. I mean, you know, whatever you want to do is fine. I mean, he's an author. I mean, I, I don't see him as... He's not a historian, and I don't really see him as a journalist. He's just, he's like a, he's a, he's the NFL insider guy who reports yeah. you those little tidbits on the fucking two-minute hits on ESPN <laughs> that, you know, don't, don't, don't affect the outcome of the game. Yeah. I mean, you know, so if you like that stuff, then pay attention to it. If you don't like that stuff, then, you know, don't worry about it. I see the same thing with the Struck guy. I mean... So that guy's what out selling a book now, and I'm supposed to like him? I mean, it, this guy fucked shit up from fucking day one, and now he wants to go make some money off of it. I mean, just get the hell out of the way. But if he's people want to support hear what himself he's got somehow, to say, you know, but if people want to hear what he's got to say, he's allowed to write a book. They're allowed to buy it. If you send it to me, you know, straight to the fucking trash can. I don't care what the guy has to say. Yeah. I mean. And he's not helping matters, to be honest with you. If he really is anti-Trump, you know, and he really thinks it's that, he's not really helping by going out and, and putting on this fucking circus he's, he's doing. I mean, it, you know, it's to make himself some money, which he's entitled yeah. to do, again, if that's what he wants. But I don't fucking care what he I, I mean, I would go with, yeah. I would read Bob Woodward's book before I would read that guy's book. I, I'll tell you what, the thing that bothers me, I, I think, is like, I'll watch MSNBC and they'll have somebody on, like, Trump's niece. And then they will fawn all over her. They never challenge anything she's saying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she does have her side of the story. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, just because she says, I think he's a terrible guy doesn't mean she's right. But they're wanting to hear what they're wanting to hear. And so they don't ever challenge her. I was watching to her tonight. The book too. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. so it, she it's, it's, it's no different on both sides. I mean, you know, that's right. Trump does the interviews, Woodward writes the book, and then the book is not favorable. So Trump, you know, immediately is on television or in speeches the next day. All this, this, this whack job guy, Bob Woodward. Okay, so yeah. Bob Woodward is a whack job, but yet you, the president of the United States, took hours and hours yeah. out of your day on multiple occasions to talk to this guy. To talk to whack job. So yeah. you're either fucking stupid or oh, he's that. got it right. Yeah. Way, he's you're part of the media. His, his people don't see it that way. Hey, listen, we're yeah. running out of time. We're running out of time here, uh, <clears throat> at least for this week. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for being here. Charlie Wallace and Robert. Always, boy, you just I like you a lot. Uh, e even though you uh, idolized me when you were a kid, which you know we was a big mistake, mistake. Big mistake on your part. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much. I enjoy having you here every night. Uh, same thing with you, Josh. Anytime you can call, it's a smarter show. Uh, same thing to Vernon Nunn. And where's the kid tonight, uh, Brian? They're sleeping. Boy. Sleeping, sleeping. Boy, she, she passed out. But she, yeah, she passed out yesterday, too. Wow. Yeah, good. Well, good. That's what happens when you give her heroin. And... Uh, <laughs> Fred, Fred Sox or, or Mr. Sullivan, whatever your name is, really, you enjoy, right. really yeah. enjoy having you here. And please call more, will you? Sure. I know she tried to call a couple of nights ago and then you gave up for some reason. Uh, but yeah. call more. You're terrific. And, of course, uh, Bree, always good hearing from you. From Kuala Lumpur, yeah. looks like you're and next. thanks to everybody in the chat room on YouTube. Okay, everybody. Why don't you wave goodbye and I will wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And I will uh, get rid of them all and uh, send them off to uh, um, Zoom Oblivion. Okay? Uh, but, uh, hey, there's a show coming on right after mine. It's, uh, it, it's uh, Jack Bishop, and it's called The Intersection. And he uses Skype to talk to people, so you might want to warm up your Skype and give him a call. Okay? In the meantime... 
that's for uh, that's it for us for this week. We'll see you again. Uh, what uh, come? Well, we might do a show on Monday at four o'clock, like we have been doing, and then we will see you right here with the regular show, ten thirty, Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Hey, I'm running overtime here. I better get out of here.